Hello! Welcome! I'm Rhett, Captain of the Custodians, and tonight I'm going to watch the death battle between, uh, I think it's it's Reverse Flash, I said Zoom last time, aren't they the same fucking person? But the death battle between Reverse Flash and Goku Black. Now, I, I literally, I literally just watched the death battle between uh, Iron Man versus Batman, and I actually really liked that one. If I had to give it a ranking, it would probably be like an, a 7 out of 10, at least in terms of death battles go. Not in terms of like my typical ranking system. But yeah, as a death battle, I think that might have been like a 7-ish out of 10. There were some problems, but I liked it. You want to get more, more detailed thoughts? Go watch that video. But this one is Goku Black versus Reverse Flash. Now, in the last video, I talked about my favorite Mar well, my favorite DC characters. Uh, I said that Flash used to be one, but he's kind of going down. And that's because I'm getting really fucking tired of how ridiculously overpowered the Flash is and how horribly that is portrayed. I don't want him to be that powerful, but if he is, stop letting him be hit by errant boomerangs and a guy with a gun that makes things uncomfortably cold. So having Reverse Flash, someone who, while not as fast, not as stupid, let's just say that, not as powerful, not as stupid as Barry Allen or especially Wally West, still is in the same category of dumb versus a Dragon Ball Super Dragon Ball character. <laughs> now this is gonna be fun because DC and Dragon Ball I think have the worst power scaling now in our in our Hulk versus Broly death battle reaction we bring it up and don't get me wrong don't get me wrong scaling is vitally important it's vitally important I, sh I shouldn't say that scaling's the worst it's the representation of these powers that is the worst in both DC and Dragon Ball. They're about the same. Marvel is bad. In fact, it's I would you could make an argument that it's just as bad, but I typically like to see DC, Dragon Ball, Marvel. It's the third place, but it it's it's doing its damnedest to, to rise up in the ladders. Don't 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 get me wrong. But so seeing a especially in Dragon Ball Super, like with Dragon Ball Z, it can be like, ah oh, well. You know, it's like, what, Peak is like Galaxy? That's powerful, but that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. And then Dragon Ball Super, it's like, yeah. <sighs> Base Goku in the first arc is now <clears throat> universal. And then because we have really no true way to identify how strong he's gotten. Yeah, nah, he's like high outer versal now as Mastered Ultra Instinct. And it's just like, fucking what? This dude just fought a guy on a planet. I don't care how much they're holding back, all right? If you are, if you are high, like high multiversal, let's even just, or let's just say universal. If you have universal power, your holding back should shatter galaxies, right? Unless you're saying, ah, oh, no, he's only using point zero 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 one percent of his power, which. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm positive that when Broly is so violently angry that he is literally vomiting up energy out of rage. I'm sure he's really focusing on holding back there. This this Broly that is supposedly around the same strength, if not higher, than Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku. So yeah, I have problems with it, but DC does this shit too. Maybe not as overtly, and you, can, you have probably more feats to go off, like actual concrete feats, because... You know, the DC characters have been around a lot, you know, around almost as long as the goddamn, you know, US Constitution. But still, so, okay, my point being, we have a character from a show where you can be like, mm, oh yeah, no, he could probably fight a real human being and win. This fictional character, he could fight a real person and win. From another series where it's like, no, yeah, yeah, this guy kicked the author's ass in real life. Like, that's how crazy these guys get. I am excited. Who's gonna win? I'm gonna put my money on Zoom. Because Speed Force. That's why. <laughs> what other reason do you need? How did he win? Speed Force. That's the key right there. 
That's the key. But I think we're ready to begin. But before we do, please like, comment, subscribe. Follow us on social medias. The links are at the top of the description. Like Twitter, which is the best way to stay up to date with the channel. You get updated immediately as videos are posted. Then follow us on Twitch. We are streaming a lot more frequently than we have been in the past. On Sundays at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time-ish, I will be continuing our Pokemon Soul Silver Nuzlocke. Which is a super lot of fun, and you can talk to me about Death Battles, My Hero Academia, Jujutsu Kaisen, anything, uh, while we're there. And then Gabe, while kind of randomly, but I will update you ahead of time, is going through Resident Evil 8 Village for the first time, and he has having a lot of fun with that. He is an absolute scared little bitch when he plays horror games, even ones that aren't really that scary. So it's a lot of fun to watch him play. And then, of course, I will be frequently streaming throughout the weeks here throughout the week going on forever now uh what reading manga and, sh and streaming that right now i'm getting caught up on vigilantes i just finished all the season five content of my hero academia which is a lot of fun and uh i going to transition now because it's important to our patreon Please follow us on Patreon as well, as there are benefits to doing so, and while there aren't that many, there are many more better ones on their way. But right now, if you support us on Patreon, not only will you get our eternal love and respect for you as an individual person, because you deserve it, at least when you follow us on Patreon, or subscribe, <laughs> but you also get access to, one, a shout-out during the video, should be over here somewhere, there's your names, uh, somewhere. But you also get access to polls that will decide certain aspects of what the channel is doing. Right now, a poll is up to determine what manga I will be reading once I get caught up with Vigilantes. And right now, One Piece is winning. So please, give me a hand there. Give a pal a little help. Help out your captain, okay? Please? Uh, but I think that's it. So let's get on started. This is Death Battles Goku Black versus Reverse Flash. Bam, bam, bam. Goku Black, the body stealing arbiter of divine justice. Oh, I wonder if Goku Black's gonna get like infinite Zamasu. They say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. But I'd say the sincerest form of flattery is not trying to kill your superhero husband. <laughs> Honestly, I I like this matchup. I never would have thought of it, even though there are there are some uh, connections. What consumes the thoughts of a god? What do immortals dream of with all the time in the world? Bitches. In Zamasu's case, his one goal was divine justice. Yeah, this and bitches. Major Final Fantasy big bad energy all over him. As the assistant to Universe 10 Supreme Kai, Zamasu prized above all else cosmic order and natural beauty. Oh, that reminds me. It's what a like loser. And part at the same time. Here, let me try. Unsurprisingly, Zamasu despised the inherently chaotic nature of mortals, being seemingly unwilling to lift themselves out of their own cycle of violence and stupidity. Get like the fuck out of here. Yeah, I, know those I hate that trap. Human be violent and bad. It's like, fuck off. Who are you? With God Key, Goku could match blows with the God of Destruction, Beerus. Their clash nearly destroyed the entirety of Universe 7, yep. a cosmological structure at least nine times larger than our own universe. At most, it could even be as large as 13 times greater than ours. Uh, side note, it's worth mentioning that when two gods of destruction fought, they were capable of casually destroying two of these universes. And since the shockwaves from their punches traveled across Universe 7 in seconds, they'd have to be hitting way faster than light. Goku was tapping into his yep. Super Saiyan God form for this, though clearly not at its full strength. While the exact multiplier for Where Super Saiyan it? Blue is unknown, yeah, here we go. Has directly compared it to the original Super Saiyan form. And don't forget, Goku trained with Whis and fought in the tournament with yep. Universe 6 before Zamasu caught up with him. So by that time, he was way stronger. Here was a mortal with the powers of gods beyond even Zamasu's abilities. Someone who could bring his dreams to fruition. So Zammy did what it was so cool. It was so cool. The Supreme Kai wish on the Super Dragon Balls to switch bodies with Goku and kill every single mortal in the universe. And thus, like you do, Zamasu became Goku Black. Please, Goku Black, you couldn't be more creative. No, you might be wondering, why didn't he just wish all the mortals dead? But that wouldn't be as fun, would it? Black's got all of Goku's strength yep. and powers, but wielded by a genocidal maniac instead of that. Oh my god, it's the Goku who laughs! Oh my god! Saiyan heritage and godly key. 
Black can easily achieve the form of Super Saiyan God. Wait, does that mean that the Batman who laughs is Black Batman? Or it would be Batman Super Black? Saiyan Rose. Rose, really? Batman Rose. Suburban wine mom? Watch out before he unlocks Super Saiyan Live Laugh Love. He stole Goku's techniques too, like the instant transmission, where he focuses on a person's key signature to teleport to their location. And Goku stole that from the Yard Radiance. Which is a Kamehameha. But and Goku stole that from Master Roshi. He gets stronger and stronger every time he almost dies. He just becomes harder and harder boost. To kill, which really sucks for the rest of the universe because Black is kind of like if Goku just snapped one day and used his powers to their full murderous potential. Like the God Split Cut, where he surrounds his hands with a keyblade to slice you to ribbons. He used this very technique to, uh, kill Goku's family. He can even extend Bitchin'. his blade into a huge curved one called the Azure Dragon Sword, which along with his Kamehameha Badass. throws my suspicions that Goku is colorblind. Actually, Black's Azure Dragon Sword is named after a legendary weapon wielded by one of Earth's greatest warriors, the desert bandit Yamcha. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and slice open space -time itself Dude, Yamcha is native a tier. Uh, Black. Boy well, at least in what the Dragon Ball universe, he's he's the native tier. He's the native. The time ring he got from his dead master. This ring allowed Black to travel through time and even escape into Future Trunks' alternate timeline, where he had free reign over events. the entire universe. And let him team up with his best bud, himself. Too bad Goku and company showed up to spoil the fun. But wait, isn't Zamasu in Goku's body? How are there two Gokus? There's only one Goku in the multiverse, right? But Goku met Black before he met Zamasu, which means Black existed before Zamasu came up with the idea. And then they killed Zamasu before he could do it anyway, but Goku Black was still around? What the hell is going on? Sure, it's a classic grandfather's paradox. Yep. The thing is, Black's time ring prevents him from being affected by alterations to his own personal timeline. Oh, okay. So killing him Checks in the past out. doesn't change his future and vice versa. He's almost impossible to kill because even if you do it at one point in time, he still exists at another point in time. And another. And another. And another. Another. Oh, God, I hate time travel. I hate time travel so much. Fuck time travel. Unless it's multiversal time travel, in which... That's the only one that can work, really. And in a limited fashion. It took Zeno, the Omni King, the most powerful being in all of creation, to step in and erase that entire timeline just to stop Black's rampage. How ironic. Zamasu's higher calling was the eradication of all mortal life in the universe, and he stole the strongest mortal's body to do it. But in the end, he was always doomed to fail. His quest for power meant nothing against a being that would always be stronger, no matter what he did or who he was. Superman? The universe ended up being destroyed anyway. It's like one big cosmic joke with no one left to laugh. You've been running around making messes for too long, and now I'm going to choke the life from you. I hear your cancer's strong. I want to fight it. Barry Allen, The Flash. Ah! Is one of the greatest Still doing that in joke. History, an inspiration to many across time and space. And there's no better example than his number one fan from the 25th century, Eobard Thawne. All right, Wiz. We've tackled a lot of stupid names for things in our years here at Death Battle, but I'm confident that Eobard is the dumbest f***ing first name I've ever heard in my life. Eobard was completely <laughs> obsessed with the Flash. It's a futury sounding name. Studying the Speed Force like a total nerd. Good luck to him, because there's no way he's figuring that shit out. But Thawne's life irrevocably changed the day he discovered a time capsule from the 21st century. By some strange coincidence, it just so happened to contain Barry's costume. By experimenting on it, Thawne managed to replicate the Flash's powers, turning nice. himself into a mirror of his idol. And you can bet he totally crapped himself when Barry Senpai showed up in the future and took him under his wing. It was a dream come true. Until Barry realized that Thawne had fabricated crimes in order to show up and save the day. Disgraced, Thawne promised to better himself before traveling to the past to prove his worth to his hero. To prove that their bond was special. That's when Thawne found out that Barry already had a best friend. And a family. Molly West. And a life without him. He didn't matter. He wasn't special. He was just a nobody Barry tossed out in the trash and forgot about. 
Like my Tinder dates do to me. If only. When Thawne visited the Flash Museum in Barry's time, he discovered the secret identity to Flash's greatest enemy that in his future had been lost to time. The one Barry was fated to kill in battle. <coughs> the Abard Thawne. Wait a minute. Oh, ain't that a bitch? The shock drove Thon mad. If he couldn't be Flash's best friend, he'd be his greatest enemy. You know, and like a I good fan. Also ensure his own future death. He would travel from the future to terrorize the Flash family in the past. Revenge in reverse. He'd become. Once had plastic the surgery, look like Flash. Barry. Reverse Flash. We're really setting the world on fire with these names today, huh, Wiz? Thawne draws his powers from the negative speed force. What? Which he generates with every step he takes, just like Barry does with the regular speed force. The negative speed force gives Thawne access to many of the Flash's powers, including his mind-bending super speed, enough to travel all across time and space in days. He can keep up with and surpass other speedsters like Barry and Wally. Who once ran fast enough to cross the universe faster than two gods who could teleport. Wally even beat himself in a race, and Barry admitted <laughs> Thawne was still faster than that. Wait just a second, he beat himself? That doesn't even make sense. But unlike Barry and Wally, Thawne applies his powers more catastrophically, yep. using them to their full potential without any care for collateral. Take, for instance, his ability to vibrate himself through solid objects. Objects like, say, vital organs. And if he did, <coughs> he scrambled their molecules, causing instant death. Thawne did so that is kind of an instant win for, for Flash Barry then, right? Or reverse flash? Thawne's vibrations are so powerful, he can even produce a counterforce that can reverse the destruction of the entire universe. Pretty crazy sounding, but even B-tier speedsters like Jenny Ognats can do the same kind of thing. And when Barry and Wally raced each other, they were tearing up the entire multiverse. Thawne can create shockwaves with a snap, phase into your body, and possess you. And even speak at such high speeds that you'll hear his words as though they were your own thoughts. And instead of stealing your speed like other flashes, he can steal your time. Yeah, Thon can yoink decades from your life and of age you Of course he can! In just a few seconds. Gotta sound like your sex life always. <laughs> but Thon's greatest ability is his unmatched skill at time travel. And he uses this expertise to be as petty and cruel as humanly possible. Thon wasn't a dummy. He knew that if he went back in time to kill Barry before he got his powers, he'd erase himself from the time stream too. So instead, he'd just make Barry's life suck as hard as he could. It was me, Barry. It was me, Barry. He'd go back in time and adopt him as his own son, dude. What the fuck? That's another big difference between Thon and Barry. Whereas Barry only went back in time to save his mother's life, Thon often went back in time to try to fix his own mediocre life. He killed his more successful younger brother, his career rival at the Flash Museum, and every single boyfriend his crush had until there was no one left but him. And when she still rejected him, he went back in time again and made her an invalid for the rest of her life. Jesus Christ! This guy's a monster. Yup. But wait, Wiz, that's impossible. Grandpappy paradox or whatever. If he went back in time to kill someone, they'd be dead in the future, which means, which means. Which means he'd never know them and want to go back in time in the first place, right? Wiz. Maybe time is a construct with no legitimate unit of measurement other than the meager attempts man has made to understand the incomprehensible world around him. Uh, well, <laughs> actually, Thawne was just inside the time stream when Barry initiated Flashpoint, which rewrote the universe while Thawne was technically disconnected from it. So, Thawne essentially broke. Literally, figuratively, mentally, physically, temporally. Or maybe he just hated Barry so much it defied the laws of time itself. Whoa. <laughs> More specifically, this is some of the better boomstick and whiz paradox, stuff in a while. A without a past or future, literally without continuity. Not only did this mean he'd be unaffected by changes to his past, it made him effectively immortal. Stabbed in the chest by evil Batman, vaporized by Iris in some sweet, sweet payback, or getting Dr. Manhattan by the big blue god dung himself, Thawne was always reborn, unable to stay dead. But more than anything, it made him immune from consequences. Unlike Barry, whose changes to time could destroy all of reality, Thawne could do whatever he wanted. He was impossible to stop with no reason to hold back. Huh. He survived a hit from Barry while he had the entire speed force absorbed into him 
and even Wally's infinite mass punch, which has the mass of a white dwarf star. A white dwarf is essentially the remains of a star's ultra dense core. <sighs> but a, a dwarf star has nothing on the universe. Star level is so vastly below universal down, level. But he doesn't hate Barry. All of his schemes, all of his machinations, all of his insane timeline shattering threats, all of it was because it was the only way he could think of to spend time with his hero. Oh my god! Really sad. What a loser! He, it all. he never intended to be the reverse Flash. He wanted to be the Kid Flash. All Fawn ever really desired was to be by Barry's side. In the end, though, goody little two-shoes Barry forgave him and then vibrated away his living paradox powers, erasing him from existence. Though not entirely. Barry didn't kill Fawn. He reset his timeline. Removing the one thing driving his hatred, his relationship with Barry. Without that, Thon was a normal, happy Flash fan once again. It's comics, Wiz. He'll be back. Yeah. When he does, there'll be no running. He'll always be faster. He'll always catch you. And time is always on his side. You still think you can take me? Even death can't catch me. What a fuck! I hate the DC speedsters. Uh, I hate them. Batons are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. But first, let me tell you how to reverse things in the bedroom. All right. So let's see. So right now, you know, it it seems that you know, fucking Reverse Flash has a lot more like hacks potential. And if you could just phase his hand through uh, Goku Black's head, that I'm pretty sure that's game. But if if they're going just based off of numbers for how much damage they can do. Then Goku Black, according to this video, is way stronger. Way stronger. At least in terms of attack, you know, potency. Because, you know, universe is and millions, billions of times, trillions actually at times higher than fucking star level. So fucking, I, I guess if... In, Obviously, Reverse Flash is faster, so if he can use his hacks abilities and age him high, or like, age him to death, or fucking maybe do some paradox shit and be immune to it, maybe. Uh, I guess I'll give it. I'll give this fight to Reverse Flash. Let's let's see how this goes. And let's go. <laughs> Flash kill quick summary. They made the joke. God fucking damn it. Mortal sinners, prepare for divine justice. <laughs> damn, I kind of hope they had Masako X and then made him do an evil voice. The T. Oops. Excuse me, sir. I'm in need of your services. <laughs> I'm glad I, I want to see them just be utterly brutal. Digging this one. What do you think of this color? Now, not if Goku Black has a boomerang, then it's game. <laughs> of course. Nice. I like these effects. Ah, oh, that's right. They they said the ring could track could track people traveling through time. Okay, that's neat. I like that. Is this gonna be like the the Booster Gold versus Bane fight? <laughs> that 
That's good. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> How the fuck is this one gonna end? <laughs> that's that's fucking great. That's great. There it is, Dragon Ball noise. I'm digging this one a lot. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ooh, dragging him across the ground. God damn you, Ad. I like that fight. Send enough people to that sun, we really should have a timeshare. This is a tricky matchup to figure out, least of all for their incredible levels of power. Black could destroy a universe like ours at least 660 times over. I mean, a punch at least as big as a star is really badass, but that's in another league. Yeah, good. There was a lot more to cover than just how many stars or universes they could blow up. At their peak, both Goku Black and Reverse Flash were so impressive, they were removed from time itself, becoming living paradoxes, making any attempt to kill either of them meaningless. Stupid time travel. It's difficult to determine who would figure out a counter to this temporal invincibility first, but it would most likely rely on a combination of speed and smarts. As far as speed goes, it's no surprise Thon definitely had the edge. Yep. Yeah, Black's attacks could reach speeds quintillions of times faster than light, but Thon is a flash. Even early in the <laughs> Thon is a flash. That's all you need. Thon is a flash. ...that were impossible to comprehend and calculate. There are numerous examples of this for multiple iterations of the Flash, many of whom Thon was clearly equal to. Plus, he's kind of an expert when it comes to timey-wimey bullshit. And he could likely overpower Black and destroy said time ring, too. Mm. After all, Thon I mean, the time ring was what allowed it. ...to counter the destruction of the entire DC universe, which is stated in comics to be at least 100 trillion light years in diameter. That's over 1 billion times larger than our okay. own universe. Okay. And over 70 million times larger than Dragon Ball's Universe 7. It's sort of impossible to lock down the exact limits of Goku Black's upper strength without getting into lots of assumptions and guesswork. Yep. He's obviously stronger than Goku was when he clashed with Beerus, but even being super generous with training and power boosts and multipliers, the gap here is way too wide to be able to just assume Goku Black could match this level of power. The DC Universe is just too big! And remember, Barry and Wally's race almost ripped apart the entire DC multiverse. It's also important to stress that Goku Black uh. is Goku. Goku's drive and willpower can push through even the most absurd limits to potentially match higher levels of power. Zamasu took Goku's body because he's more than willing to take shortcuts. It's an entirely different mindset. Yeah, and once he took care of that time ring, Reverse Flash had a lot more up. Is that important? Fucking Black. With that super speed, ass. he could pretty easily scramble Black's insides or age him to death with a touch. Zamasu may have been a deity even without the time ring, but Goku's body is mortal with a limited range of age. Might have really screwed yourself with that one, huh, Zam Zam? Goku Black was a nightmarish foe, but Thawne's experience with time travel, ridiculous levels of hacks, yeah. and frankly impossible All right, so speed... Gave it was the hack. And the speed. This Fucking fight was fuck. Definitely not underwhelming. I this fight was awesome. I really liked this fight. I think I liked it more than the last one. I think that was awesome. I loved the fucking banter between them. Just the part where it's like, why are you still alive? That got that got me pretty good. Uh, and I, seriously, I fucking, that, ex, that explanation, that explanation, Zamasu is incredibly fast, but come on, he's a flash. Like, they're. It's, you don't, you, when you say how fast is the Flash, don't even give, like, a number or how fast in speed. It just, just, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how fast they are. They are faster than, than you think. Okay. And the banter between uh, Wiz and Boomstick in that one was some of the best I've heard in a while. 
I think I think I think that was one of the better death battles I've seen in a while. All right, who's next? All right, Kool Aid Man versus Macho Man Randy Savage. Number ten, me. But yeah, th I really enjoyed that death battle. I was in, I was not I was not expecting to like it that much, uh, but I did. I think that was great. And yep, uh, <clears throat> zoom. Uh, fuck it. Reverse Flash one through his hacks, which was how I thought I was gonna do it. Now I I I didn't. I kind of I for, I did forget about the kind of universe stuff that they brought up earlier. So I thought the, the his highest attack output was the. Uh, the star punch, the, well, the dwarf star, whatever, the neutral, whatever, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that I had a lot of fun with that one. I think I did prefer that one more than the Batman vs. So the Batman vs. Iron Man one. But yeah, this this was a lot of fun. I can't I can't wait for. The, I guess I'll do the next one. Why not? Why not do another death battle? Uh, although you know, Macho Man and Kool Aid Man aren't exactly our typical content that we cover here but why not fuck it why not i hope you enjoyed this video seriously i've I, I i as you can tell i like i like who would wins i like verses and stuff and you know death battle is kind of the biggest thing on youtube to give me that content and while i don't agree with them though all the time and i think some of their stuff can be better i enjoy the shit out of death battle Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Please, one more time, like, comment, subscribe. Follow us on social medias, yada, yada, yada. Support us on Patreon. Thank you so much. Have a good one.